has taken over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. And we are back for El Coast to Coast, our number two here on a Wednesday. Carver High and Joe Lisi in for Scotty on Sports Grid and Sports Grid Radio. Great to have everybody with us here today. A lot to do this hour. Of course, we'll keep Golf Wednesdays going. Brady Cannon with me this week in the uh, in this pick segment. Of course, usually Cam Stewart came out this week. Brady slides in. Also does a tremendous job uh, with the golf pick. So we'll get Brady involved as well today. We've got a lot of uh, baseball to finish off. We'll do all of tonight's games. We've got the Taters. And then, uh, Joe, it will be a football show uh, from there on out. I just got so much for you today uh, with the football to get a little bit closer. I know that gets you very excited, Joe. Very excited. Yeah, I know. You're trying to rub my back before you buy me the drink. It's all right. It's okay. I got it. it it'll work. As long as we cover college and pro football within the next hour or so, I'll be happy. Yeah, and I, I believe me, Joe. I know at this time of year, I can't let you go too long uh, him, without actually him, talking. Him, 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 indeed. Uh, Padres beat the Twins last night, so the Dodgers win. Padres win as well, seven five over the Twins. Uh, one of my guys, Joe, of course, on a night when I'm not packing him, uh, Jerickson Profar for the Padres. They were down and then they were up on MLB Net. Profar in the air to left. Margo will run out of room, and it's gone. A home run, and the Padres are back in front 6-5. to five. Can you honestly say you're surprised? This man right here, Jerickson Profar, has also been in the thick of everything. Three-run shot, and just like that, the Padres have taken the lead. How about that, Joe, uh, for the Ooh. Padres getting involved uh, there last night? Arizona won as well down in Miami. Uh, So the Dodgers still keep a three-game lead over San Diego, a four-game lead over the Diamondbacks, uh, and the Padres and the Diamondbacks uh, further extend their lead uh, in the first and second wildcard slots in the National League, uh, which, of course, is very important as well. This one was just for you, Joe. Jays beat the Reds 10-3 last night. Uh, It was basically, aside from Springer, it was like, who are these guys homering for for Toronto, just guy after guy. Nobody was absolutely backing. Where was Big Bad Vlad when you need him? But George Springer, not once, but twice on Sportsnet in Toronto. Springer. Springer lifts a high fly ball to left field, and it is his second home run of the night. And the hits and the homers just keep on coming tonight for the Blue Jays. Yeah, that one, Joe. You were in on that over. That was one of the uh, the only ones that came in, Carver. I mean, you know, could these Reds, again, Reds are just like the Braves. One night they could break out, and then they could go six or seven nights where they score less than two runs. So hopefully they could break out tonight. We have an eight and a half in this game. Uh, this is a total that I'm willing to take up to ten and a half. Hopefully they could smash right through it. Could be a crypto play. A crypto play, huh? Could be a crypto could play be. tonight? Uh, the Reds Could and the be. Jays. We'll find out momentarily. Uh, Cubs beat the Tigers 3-1. Tough night in, in Chicago. I was actually watching this, Joe, while I was doing the radio. and I mean, the wind was just blowing straight in uh, at Wrigley last night. Uh, very tough night if you just couldn't play any long balls in that game. Angels beat the Royals 9-5. And the Rays and the A's dead under. one nothing. That was after what? 3-0 three, three the night before, Joe? Or 3-1 the night before? Uh, with yeah. the Rays and the A's, so it would be nice. Maybe maybe tonight they get things cooking uh, after a couple of no, – Joe's already – Joe and the Rays don't mix. He's already shaking his head. No, I took he it. Nothing to do I it. took it. It's like it's like bad poison for me. I, I go to the well with the with the Rays every single – they delay a, a seven and a half, and I alt it up to nine and a half, ten and a half, hoping that they would break out. They got an absolute gas can on the mound tonight. The guy last night was his ERA was seven point nine, and the and they and they got one run. They did. I mean, terrible. Joe, I couldn't believe it that it was one nothing. I'm just waiting around. Like the last two nights have been brutal. 
uh, with runs or homers. Just that, and there's been a lot of late night games, Joe. There's been like four or five late night games the last few nights. Seven just nine nothing, ERA. Guys throwing like happening. Nolan Ryan. Guys throwing was, like Nolan Ryan last night. He's hitting the corners. Tough. Him and well, Greg Maddox. No, Forget last night now. It's time to turn the page uh, and get uh, back on the horse for tonight. Uh, so let's go. We've got a big night slate uh, going here. 3-1 Red Sox, by the way, bottom seven. And the Astros have two on and no out. And now it's second and third no out after a wild pitch. So Dubon is up here. Uh, we'll see if they can get these runs home and tie this game at three. Diamondbacks and the Marlins once again in Miami tonight. Jordan Montgomery and Rattery Munoz will be the starters, Joe. Minus 160 for the Snakes, plus a buck 35 for the Fish, and eight and a half is the total here. Uh, I like Arizona, but I like the over here too, Carver. I think they should be able to score against Miami, and Miami does a pretty good job of getting runners on base. Sometimes they can't convert, but I I think this number could go over too. Uh, I'm starting to like the overs at night. Uh, you know, this Munoz, Joe, uh, for Miami, he has been one of those guys. I'm not going after him with my home run picks tonight, but I'll find somebody to play against him. 22 homers in 78 innings Ugh. so far this year. That is let's, not good let's, whatsoever. Let's get it. Uh, when we'll see. Yeah, look, <laughs> this could be a young jock night. Uh, they're probably not going to get the best price for Peterson, uh, but if you throw Peterson maybe in a little uh, home run barley or something like that, Joe, uh, I think he might get you there. That's for sure. Next, uh, Twins and the Padres playing uh, what for us is a night game, Joe, but out in San Diego, a little late afternoon special. Uh, 340 first pitch out there at Petco Local. Simeon Woods Richardson and Matt Waldron are the starters. Minus 125 for the Friars, plus 105 for the Twins, and an eight and a half here as well. The Twins, what did I tell you? Red Sox, Mets, Twins, you just bet the overs until you go like me this week and you bet the Red Sox and the Mets and they go three three nights with dead unders. So they broke out for 12 runs last night. I want to lean to the over here, but it's not a – It's I'm not feeling great about it, but I lean to the over. I think they could get over this total. I think San Diego can knock them around as well. You know, this Waldron, Joe, uh, he's been real bad his last couple times out. Uh, I mean, real bad. He gave up seven runs against Colorado last time, five runs against Miami the time before that. Uh, So Waldron, uh, I'd go after him. I like the over in that game uh, with you, Joe. Colorado and Washington. We talked about this before. Dead under last night. Tonight, you are going to get Tanner, don't call me Flash Gordon, against Mitchell Parker Lewis can't lose. Minus 160 for the Nats. Plus a buck thirty-five for the Rockies. Seven and a half. This is down to Joe. I'm seeing seven and a half right now. Wow. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take a shot with the Rockies plus one thirty-four, Carver. But this is a principal play. Uh, your best bet last night off a of principal alone. I have to take the over. You know, this is like ninety percent. I feel like a principal play for you. Principal, huh? principal play. Principal play. Principal play. What do you think? You, I, I got to tell you, this this Gordon, he's really bad on Colorado. Gordon stinks. I could see Parker, Parker pitching okay, but Gordon is so bad. I feel like – the and Washington's not a great offensive team, Joe, by any means, but they should be able to score runs off of this guy. I'll go after it again, Joe. Over uh-oh. the seven and a half. Now, I'm not alternate like you. With the 10, 11, 12, him, him, him. I'm not doing any of that. But for the seven and a half, uh, I will get involved. Uh, that's for sure uh, with that. 3 1 Cabbage is up for the Astros here with second and third and one out. Pinch hitting against Weissert. Uh, we'll see if the Astros can tie this game up. Uh, also, still 1 0. White Sox Giants, they're flying along now, Joe. Bottom third yeah. in San Francisco uh, and still scoreless in Arlington for the Pirates and the Rangers. All right, we'll come back. We got to keep Golf Wednesday going. Brady Cannon with me this week for the picks. We're back coast to coast right after this.
What a chance it is for Adam Paxton and Victor Tingstrom to pick up their first weekly titles. Adam Paxton, well, it's been the dream debut so far for him. For Victor Tingstrom, he'll feel like this is a moment, a little while coming, a place in the final, up for grabs for one. Magic can do it. Make that double 18 away for a place in the final. Wesley Plazier was beaten, knocked out by Mike Warburton in a last leg decider. Play. That is what they are playing for. They are playing for the trophy. They are playing for the big prize pot and they are playing for a place in the £25,000 Champions Week. 97. There is a point you feel that reality will surely kick in for Adam Paxton, who's here on debut. Uh, he watches the Super Series almost every single week. What is he was happy just to be playing in a group. This could be the leg that we talk about at the end of the Michael night, as being the one that changed the final, because Adam Paxton has just gone cold at the moment. Bang on He doesn't just get two, he gets the lot. Adam should take up the 16 out. If not, Mike's just behind him. He shot him a big leg. Can Paxton deliver one of the biggest moments of his career so far? He can. Double 12. Green what a moment that is from Adam, Adam Paxton. Paxton. Mike Warburton was looking at 60 to win the match. Paxton, here's your moment. He approaches the hockey with confidence, with time, Game. and John delivers Adam, Adam Paxton the the on debut. Is. The boy, the fanboy, comes Adam to the Super Series Paxton. and wins. And we are back for El Coast to Coast here on a Wednesday, a golf Wednesday on c to c Carver High in for Scotty. Great to have you with us on Sports Grid and Sports Grid Radio. Of course, every week here on a golf Wednesday, we give you uh, the outrights, the placements, the first round leader bombs, everything. Usually the prime minister out on assignment this week. <laughs> so we bring in our other golf guru who usually does the live with me, Brady Cannon steps up and in brady uh good to see you as always my man and listen brady uh on fire with the pga as well because i know brady had hideki matsuyama last week uh in that first leg of the playoff at the saint jude brady great to see you and congrats on going to the window with hideki hey thank you very much my big shoes to fill here with uh filling in for uh, cam stewart <laughs> but uh on a golf wednesday yeah I'm, I'm glad to just be here and be alive michael i mean sweating that hideki matsuyama ticket last week was something i mean he had a five shot lead with seven to play and oh my gosh then it was almost gone in a wink of an eye he went four over par in the next four holes and Thankfully, Victor Hovland missed a couple of putts down the stretch, and Hideki nails that bomb at 17, and, and we got home. But they're never easy, are they? They're never easy, Brady. And it's funny because we all do this, and we all spend Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday just kind of looking at numbers or looking at angles and looking at all these things. And one of the biggest things that was thrown around for three days last week was that Hideki doesn't have his caddy, he doesn't have his coach. Yeah. They all got the, the, you know, they got robbed in London, had to go back to Japan to get their passports. Oh, you can't play a decky this week. He's so tight. He's close with everyone. He goes out and wins, Brady. So that's just kind of how it, sometimes all these things that we obsess over when we're trying to get ready for the golf, you just got to throw them out the window sometimes. It's funny. Oh, you're absolutely right. And, and I thought he was a great fit for the golf course. One of the heaviest yeah. statistics I leaned on last week was scrambling. You know Hideki is one of the best in the world. Over the last yeah. 24 rounds coming in, he was second in that field in scrambling. And I love the way the course was similar to what we saw Le Golf National in Paris 
where you had a lot of water, relatively narrow fairways, and you really kind of had to work your ball around and avoid that water hazard that were, you know, that was everywhere in Paris and very similar at TPC Southwind in Memphis, where you had, I think, 11 holes where water came into play. And Hideki obviously was able to negotiate it uh, in Paris, getting the bronze medal. And, and he basically just replicated the same formula off the tee. And he got red, absolutely scorching hot with the putter for the first three days. And you know what that usually means. You cool off on the final day. So I was worried, but he was able to, to make a couple when it counted and get us home. And now he's going to sit in some very cushy position uh, heading out to Castle Pines for the BMW. Uh, Hideki, don't got to worry about much. He'll be at Eastlake next week uh, in Atlanta for the Tour Championship. Let's talk about this course, Brady, because uh, I like when we get a place that we don't normally see. Uh, I I think it makes it fun. It makes it interesting. I love the same old places, but a course that's been over 20 years since it's been played on the PGA Tour. 48 out of the 50 guys in the field have never played a competitive round at this place. So I think it makes it very intriguing. We know who's going to be the chalk at the top, and that's going to be Scotty Scheffler, of course, Xander Schauffele. Rory gets bumped down a little bit after a very tough weekend for him in Memphis. Tell me a little bit about Castle Pines. Very long, Brady. Yeah, absolutely. It'll be the longest PGA Tour course ever at over 8,100 yards. Now, you figure in the altitude, they're playing at about 6,300 feet, and the course is probably going to adjust to about 7,400 yards, the way it plays. And a par 72, that's actually pretty standard length. But you go back to the international, you mentioned it started in 1986. I used to love to watch this tour event. You know, you get to see the mountains and the streams and golf in Colorado, which we don't always see, and seeing these players just launch the ball at elevation. So, yeah, I'm absolutely excited to be back here. I think total driving will be a big factor this week, Mike, because it's going to take these guys a minute to adjust to that elevation. And how do they, you know, how do they kind of rein in their ball off the tee, maintaining the accuracy, yet trying to take advantage of that thin air and and get it out there as far as they can as well. So I think total driving is going to be key. You're going to have a lot of approach shots from 200 yards or better, and it's going to be a different club than you're used to hitting from 200 yards or better when we're down at sea level. And I think you're going to miss a lot of greens in regulation. So once again, like we talked about with Hideki, I think scrambling will be important once again this week. And I think they're going to make some scores, Mike. One local odds maker out here at the Westgate Superbook, uh, he made the under-over proposition for a winning score of 22 and a half, 22 and a half under par. So he is expecting some birdies here at Castle Pines and, I, I don't disagree necessarily. If you can find some fairways and, and get your approach game on, you're going to make some scores here this week. Uh, you certainly are. Uh, that's for sure. All right. Uh, my theory for this week, uh, Brady, is uh, there's only 50 guys left. And if you look at the last five years of this event, the event moves around, but one thing stays the same. Big dogs win the BMW championship this leg before uh, the tour championship. We had Victor last year. You had Cantlay two years before that, Rom, JT, since we've kind of gone to this format. So for me, Brady, I'm not going to look very far down the board. I, I want to keep it to a lot of the big guys that are going to be at the top. I'll quickly run through my outrights, and then we come back from the break, Brady. You give me all of yours. Here's who I'm going with. Colin Morikawa, 14-1. to 1. I just feel like Colin is going to win at some point this year. He's been too close. For months, he's going to get one. Patrick Cantlay at 18-1. to Cantlay, that Saturday and Sunday round for me, Brady. I think that's going to be a little bit of a springboard for him. Victor Hovland, another springboard. Turned it on last week. Won the BMW last year. Wyndham Clark, the only Colorado guy in the mix uh, who maybe knows this place a little bit and also played well. And Justin Thomas at 45-1. to A step up for me to, uh, I I think he's going to elevate here, get himself a little bit closer in that top 30, uh, and that's where I'm sitting, Brady, with my guys. We're going to come back. I know you've got some different guys than me, uh, and you will lay that all out on the line for us here. A golf Wednesday on C2C. Brady Cannon with us, the outrights for the BMW Championship from Brady when we come back on the grid right after this.
what a chance it is for Adam Paxton and Victor Tingstrom to pick up their first weekly titles. Adam Paxton, well, it's been the dream debut so far for him. For Victor Tingstrom, he'll feel like this is a moment, a little while coming, a place in the final up for grabs for one. You can do it. Make that double 18 away for a place in the final. Wesley Plazier was beaten, knocked out by Mike Warburton in a last leg decider. Play. That is what they are playing for. They are playing for the trophy. They are playing for the big prize pot and they are playing for a place in the £25,000 Champions Week. 97. There is a point you feel that reality will surely kick in for Adam Paxton. He's here on debut. Uh, he watches the Super Series almost every single week. What is it? He was happy just to be playing in a group. This could be the leg that we talk 45. about at the end of the Michael night as being the one that changed the final because Adam Paxton has just gone cold at the moment. Bang on what is it? He doesn't just get two, he gets the lot. Adam should take up the 16 out. If not, Mike's just behind him. He shot him a fifth leg. Can Paxton deliver one of the biggest moments of his career so far? He can. Double 12. Green what a moment that five. is from Adam, Adam Paxton. Paxton. Mike Warburton was looking at 60 to win the match. 14. Paxton, here's your moment. He approaches the hockey with confidence, with time, Game. and Jones, delivers Adam, Adam Paxton the the on debut. Series. The boy, Jesus the fanboy, comes Adam to the Super Series Paxton. and wins. And we are back from coast to coast here on a Wednesday, a golf Wednesday on C to C. Carver High in for Scotty on Sports Grid and Sports Grid Radio. Brady Cannon is with me as we get ready. BMW Championship, Castle Pines, Colorado, second stop of the FedEx Cup playoffs. Only 50 golfers left in the field. All right, Brady, give it to me. The outrights for you this week in Colorado. Well, first of all, I'm right there with you. I, I didn't play it, but I absolutely agree with your Morikawa play. I was on him last week. I like to go on this guy when driving accuracy, I feel, is more of a factor. And he's been so close. I said basically the same thing that you just said. It would be wild if we went through this entire year with, without Morikawa winning. He's been so close. So I'm rooting for you. We do land on the same guy in Justin Thomas. I got him at uh, like 52 to one. Nice, Isn't that nice. amazing? 50 players in the field and Justin yeah. Thomas is 52 to one. That's crazy, but it just tells you where his game has gone the last couple of years, but we've started to see it turn around. A couple things I looked at this week were how have guys done when playing at elevation and how have they done on Jack Nicholas designs? Well, Justin Thomas has done tremendous at the Memorial. Uh, he's got a number of top 10 finishes there, top 15 finishes at the Memorial. And then also when they played that workday charity open, remember when they went back to back weeks at Mirfield Village in 2020, Thomas lost in a playoff actually to who? Your guy. Colin Morikawa, and he also finished runner-up at Sherwood Country Club in Thousand Oaks, California, another Nicholas design when they played the Zozo there in 2020. So he's got the Nicholas chops, and at the WGC Mexico, when they used to play there at Elevation, they played that tournament for four years at Chapultepec, and Thomas was a machine there. Every year, all four years, he finished top 10, and he was runner-up one year as well. So you know, it just makes sense from those two angles. And I said, okay, 52, let's try it with JT and see if he can recreate what he's done in the past at Elevation and at Nicholas Design Golf Courses. And then, like you said, I went to a big dog. I went with Rory McIlroy. Okay, there's 50 guys in the field. And let's be realistic. Let's say 30 of them have a realistic chance to win, right? So Rory McIlroy at, at 16 to 1 in a field of 30, basically, I thought that was a pretty good price. I think we're getting a little bit of value because he finished second to last last week in Memphis. 
I talked about total driving. There's nobody better. He's second on the PGA Tour in total driving is Rory McIlroy. There's reports that he's just been blistering the golf ball out there. He might hit it 400 yards one time this week. If he can find the fairways, he's going to be tough to beat. And then I went a little deeper at 25 to 1 to another guy that just mashes the ball off the tree, off the tee, long and straight. Number three on tour in total driving, Ludwig Oberg. Um, also great on approach. You know, I just think, again, a fit for this golf course. And I think we may have gotten some value on his price as well with him finishing 40th last week. So I was a little surprised to see him as high as 25. Now he's creeped down a little bit. I've seen him closer to 20, 21 to 1. I thought 25 was a tick too high. And then I went with Mr. Red Hot, Billy Horschel has three top 10 finishes in a row, comes off of the runner-up at the Open Championship, finished eighth at Valhalla earlier this year, another Nicholas design, has won at Mirfield Village before the Memorial Tournament, a Nicholas design, and has won at Elevation. The last time the BMW Championship was in Colorado, 2014, 17 miles away at Cherry Hills. Who was your winner? Billy Horschel, and he went on to win the FedEx Cup that year. So give me McElroy, Oberg, Horschel, and JT for a four-pack. I think you're absolutely right, Brady. You're getting two guys there at this, really three if you count JT. You're right. That's a discounted price with only 50 guys in the field. But Rory's been coming off between 5 and 10, and you're getting him at 16. Ludwig's been between 15 and 20, and you're getting him at 25. Uh, that's nice. Quickly, Brady, here's what I got for placements. I'm with you on Rory. He's bouncing back this week. He doesn't have a chip on his shoulder after how bad he played. I'll play him T5 at 210. Fleetwood, Finau, and Sepp Straka, all top 10s for me. These are guys that are right around that 30 number. Got to make sure that they're playing at East Lake next week. And Nick Dunlap and Eric Cole, for me, riding a little hot wave. Guys who are between 30 and 50, Brady, that really need to play well. They might not do enough to get there, but I think they'll play well again this weekend and set themselves up for a chance on Sunday. First round leaders, we had Chris King, uh, Chris Kirk last week at 90 to 1. Cantley, Fleetwood, Rye, Zalatoris, Sepp, and Cole. We like guys who are either fast starters or played well on Sunday and they're coming into this event. Brady, there it is. Uh, the Golf Wednesday picks, baby. I'm glad you were with me. <laughs> Go Nick Dunlap, man. I know he's taken some sharp action to finish top 20 here in Las Vegas at Circa. Let's go. Golf Wednesday, C to C. Brady Cannon, we're back after this. What a chance it is for Adam Paxton and Victor Tingstrom to pick up their first weekly titles. Adam Paxton, well, it's been the dream debut so far for him. For Victor Tingstrom, he'll feel like this is a moment, a little while coming. A place in the final up for grabs for one. You can do it. Make that double 18 away for a place in the final. Wesley Plazier was beaten, knocked out by Mike Warburton in a last leg decider. Play. That is what they are playing for. They are playing for the trophy. They are playing for the big prize pot and they are playing for a place in the £25,000 Champions Week. 97. There is a point you feel that reality will surely kick in for Adam Paxton. He's here on debut. Uh, he watches the Super Series almost every single week. What is it? He was happy just to be playing in a group. This could be the leg that we talk 45. about at the end of the Why night as being the one that changed the final because Adam Paxton has just gone cold at the moment. Bang on good. He doesn't just get two, he gets the lot. Adam should take up the 16 out. If not, Mike's just behind him. He shot on the fifth leg. Can Paxton deliver one of the biggest moments of his career so far? He can. Double 12. Green what a moment that is from Adam, Adam Paxton. Paxton. Mike Warburton was looking at 60 to win the match. 40. Paxton, here's your moment. He approaches the hockey with confidence. 
with time James and John delivers Anima. Adam Paxton the the on debut. Series. The boy, James the fanboy, comes Adam to the Super Series Paxton. and wins. And we are back from coast to coast here on a Wednesday. Carver High and Joe Lisi in for Scotty on Sports Grid and Sports Grid Radio. Great to have everybody with us here today. Joe gets very jealous on Wednesdays because the golf syndicate comes in. All the golf guys are in, in and out, golf, golf, golf. All Joe's guys that he plays every week aren't in because it's only the top 50 guys uh, who are on the points list. So Joe's guys who are usually... 700 to 1, 500 to 1. Those guys didn't make it this far. So Joe's got nowhere to turn uh, this week. You go with Billy Horschel. He's one of your guys, Joe. Billy Ho's, I was just uh, going to say, Joe's Billy Ho guy. is available. Billy Ho. I tell you, Brady how, just he's picked him? In, how he's still in the top 50. He never wins anything. He Well, he won uh, the compiler. ultimate event. He's a compiler. He won, well, well, not only that, Joe. He's actually played great for about two months now. So he won that one alternate event in Punta Cana or wherever it was. And he's, he finished what second at the open championship. And now he's backed that up with a couple more top tens at the window men last week. So that, you know, late in the year, Joe, the points go up a little bit and that vaults you through. Uh, and Billy Ho's got a chance to go to the tour championship next week. Uh, at Eastlake, if he could play well this week again. Uh, all right, Joe, uh, let's finish the baseball. We have several games yet uh, to get to. 3-1, Red Sox lead the Astros, top of the ninth in Houston. Scoreless, top of the eighth in Arlington between the Pirates and the Rangers. 2-2, White Sox and Giants, Joe. 2-2 two, two, uh, in that one. Over. That changed in, in, a, in a, quickly. So four runs in. And uh, and what'd you get that up to? How high'd you go with the White Sox and the Giants? Eight and a half. Okay, so you went up a couple runs. But you probably got good. Did you put it with anything? What'd you put of it? Of course with? I did. <laughs> games for tonight. You put it with yes. games for tonight or games yes. that are losing right now. Okay. So no, Milwaukee. Milwaukee, and then the Lakers. Ah, oh, so. Milwaukee. All right, we'll get to that in a moment. Cincinnati and Toronto uh, once again. So we had the Reds pound them two nights ago. The Blue Jays pounded them last night. Nick Martinez and Yariel Rodriguez are the starters tonight. Yes. Minus 115 for the Reds, minus 105 for the Jays. Seven and a half, Joe, after two dead overs. Yeah, I'm going for it. I, I don't know why. Either they're sucking me in or I'm going to get smashed. But I'm going to take a shot. I think the Blue Jays do, in fact, win. But I like the over seven and a half. I think they can get to 11, 12 tonight again. So I'm just not sold on the pitching matchup. Hopefully, both that's sides can come to the plate. It's always been one or the other, and that's been the M.O. of the Reds. They got knocked around by, by Kansas City on Sunday, had bases loaded. Your guy, Ellie De La Cruz, gets up, whiffs. De La Cruz has been cold. Cold. Yeah, cold. He sure has. Uh, he's been real cold, Joe. Uh, I like the Reds tonight, by the way. Uh, with Martinez going for them. Uh, the Yankees have the Guardians in town again tonight after last night's 12-inning loss at home to them. Uh, Joey Cantillo is going for Cleveland. Nasty Nestor Cortez, not so nasty, uh, going for the Yankees. Minus 190. Are you serious? Plus 160 for Cleveland and an 8.5. I'm taking Cleveland. I think Cleveland matches up well. Now, postseason potentially is a different story because we know how Cleveland does in terms of the playoffs. But give me give me the Guardians tonight. I think plus one sixty four is ripe. I want to say over, but I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say nothing. No play for the total tonight. No play. Uh, I'll say the Guardians at that price, Joe. Uh, Guardians at that price uh, at Yankee Stadium against them all right the phillies and the braves in atlanta tonight now you look at this pitching matchup joe you go man aaron nola max freed seven and a half total uh this is probably gonna be a dead under no 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 joe uh it is not uh minus 115 for the phillies minus 105 for the Braves. seven and a half uh these guys uh both 
Lots of history here. Uh, lots of big numbers, Joe, because uh, they've seen each other so much. The Braves have seen Aaron Nola a billion times. The Phillies have seen Max Fried a billion times. They've all got guys up and down the lineup with very good numbers on both sides. Over the seven and a half tonight, Joe, for the Phillies and the Braves. You say it all the time. Good luck and Godspeed. I, I can't take that. I'm going to root it in for your partner. I hope you get it, but I'm going to lean to the Phillies tonight. Give me Nola. I thought originally the Braves would come through, but Nola, every time I bet against Nola, he wins. Every time I bet on him, he loses. So maybe it'll be good luck for you. Uh, Maybe it will, Joe. Uh, The Brewers and the Cardinals in St. Louis. Tobias Myers and Kyle Gibson tonight. Minus 120 for the Redbirds. Even money for the Brewers and a seven and a half in this one. Yeah, I like this game. I like St. Louis at home, and I think they blow through that number tonight. This is one of my better totals. Could be a crypto over. Seven and a half. I think they get nine and a half, ten. Ham, ham, ham. Over, over, over tonight. (laughs) Crypto total. Uh, Tigers and the Cubs at Wrigley again tonight. I got to check the weather, Joe, see if the Uh, wind is blowing straight in. Uh, again, uh, the Cubs will have Jamison shots at Tyone. Uh, the Detroit now is just, if it's not Scooble, you have no idea who's pitching. They do this undecided now. They do an opener. Someone comes in after. Who knows who the Tigers are throwing? Minus 155 for the Cubbies, plus 130 for Detroit, and a seven and a half, Joe. Seven and a half. I'm going to take Detroit, and I'm going to go under because, uh, again, every time I bet the Cub over, they don't come through. The Cubs are inconsistent, and Detroit's the more complete team. Now, I don't care who's pitching. I think the Tigers get it done tonight. Tigers and under. Tigers and the under. All right, Joe. Uh, Next, the Angels are in Kansas City still against the Royals. Michael Lorenzen goes for them. And how about Johnny Cueto? Back in the bigs uh, with Anaheim uh, making his first start of the season. Of course, he was with Miami last year. Uh, right now, Joe, minus a buck eighty for Kansas City, plus one fifty for Anaheim, and a nine and a half. Those are the numbers we like. Yeah, I know, but it's based off of how Kansas City played and has been playing. They've been scoring a boatload of runs. It's due to end soon. I mean, Cueto is a gas can, gas can special. I would say over, but I'm not going to play it. So that means fifteen runs tonight. Give me the Angels though, as a dog, plus sure. one eighty. You're really not going to play it? You're not going to play no. it? No. All right, I'm, I'm, I'll play it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to play automatic. it. If you're not playing it's it, an, and I might, I'm not playing I might that alter game. it as high as it can go, too, uh, if you're not playing it, because you're right. <laughs> that, game's got, that game's got 12-8 written all over it now uh, because you're not going to play the game. Uh, I'm not. Tampa in <laughs> two dead unders the last few nights between the Rays and the A's at the dump. Uh, Mitch Spence. For Oakland tonight, Ryan Pipiaf for the Rays minus one thirty-five, plus a buck fifteen for Oakland and a seven and a half. They sucked me in again. I mean, seven and a half with Oakland and Spence and this team. I, I Carver. I mean, come on. This this total should be nine and a half, ten. Let's be honest. You know as well as anybody, the A's can score too. I, I don't know what's going on. Let's generate some runs. I did take this already. Nine and a half. I got a two two twenty nine and a half. I got to double check two or two right. or two twenty. I got it in a parlay. Brewers, Mariners, and the Dodgers. The last one, Joe uh, Logan. What's eating Gilbert Grape against Jack Flaherty? Minus one eighty for the Dodgers. Uh, plus a buck fifty for Seattle. Seven and a half the total in this one. I'm willing to take a shot on Seattle and the under here uh, again. I think. I think Seattle could step step up. They went toe-to-toe. They would they lose 6-3 last night. I think they could step up tonight and maybe make it a game. I like the over, Joe. Over 7.5 for the Mariners and the Dodgers tonight. I'm a a glutton. I'm going after it. I've been complaining about how nobody scored any runs the last few nights. They got over, though. Uh, The Mariners and the Dodgers uh, took that hammer home, but they did do it. Uh, We'll give you the taters when we come back, and then we'll get into all of the football. For El Coast to Coast on a Wednesday, we're back after this.
what a chance it is for Adam Paxton and Victor Tingstrom to pick up their first weekly titles. Adam Paxton, well, it's been the dream debut so far for him. For Victor Tingstrom, he'll feel like this is a moment, a little while coming, a place in the final up for grabs for one. Which you can do it. Make that double 18 away from a place in the final. Wesley Plazier was beaten, knocked out by Mike Warburton in a last leg decider. Play. That is what they are playing for. They are playing for the trophy. They are playing for the big prize pot and they are playing for a place in the £25,000 Champions Week. 97. There is a point you feel that reality will surely kick in for Adam Paxton. He's here on debut. Uh, he watches the Super Series almost every single week. What are they? He was happy just to be playing in a group. This could be the leg that we talk 45. about at the end of the Michael night as being the one that changed the final because Adam Paxton has just gone cold at the moment. Bang on Goo. He doesn't Six. just get two, he gets the lot. Adam should take out the 16 out. If not, Mike's just behind him. He shot on the fifth leg. Can Paxton deliver one of the biggest moments of his career so far? He can. Double 12. Green what a moment that five. is from Adam, Adam Paxton. Paxton. Mike Warburton was looking at 60 to win the match. 14. Paxton, here's your moment. He approaches the hockey with confidence, with time, Game. and Short delivers Panama. Adam Paxton and the the on debut. The boy, Jesus the fanboy, comes Adam to the Super Series Paxton. and wins. And we are back from coast to coast here on a Wednesday. Carver High and Joe Lisi in for Scotty on Sports Grid and Sports Grid Radio. Great to have everybody with us here today. All right, Joe, we're going to finish this off uh, with the Taters, of course. Uh, first, 4 1 Red Sox, bottom of the ninth. Astros are down to their last out. Scoreless, bottom eight in Arlington. Pirates and the Rangers. 2 2 White Sox and Giants, bottom five in san francisco uh, as the white Sox now have chad you're so cool uh out on the mound with fitzgerald up maybe he could put one in the seats uh which would be nice to see uh here's what we got joe for tater time for tonight uh as you know i'm not happy uh because it's been very icy uh the last few days uh but we're gonna stick with it uh you know what we know what to do joe when it gets a little icy what do you do you go down a unit you know wait it out gonna get hot again uh things will start to go uh, here's what we're doing for tater time uh, this evening. I actually got two from that Atlanta Philly game, uh, which I told you I think is going to go way over that seven and a half. I'm going to start with the big bear, Marcelo Zuna, uh, plus 350 for him tonight in his career against Aaron Nola, 233. He's got like over 50, 60 at bats against him, but he's homered four times off of him in his career. Uh, he's hot, hit one last night as well, plus 350 for Ozuna tonight joe uh to get that one going and a double dip like i said from that game on the other side of things trey turner for the Ooh. phillies how about these numbers joe 17 for 43 that's a nice 395 clip three homers and six rbis uh off of max freed he sees max freed very well so we are gonna go with trey turner tonight and a big fat price that was plus 750 sound to you uh for trey turner uh tonight nice. against max freed and that's surprising to me joe i know turner's been hasn't been playing he's been like cold he had that really hot stretch in july he's cooled off but plus 750 for him so double dip for atlanta and philly ozuna 350 trey turner at plus 750 next miami and arizona down at south beach we're going to burger time baby i know we got uh -oh. Munoz on the other side He's a gas can. He gives up a lot of homers, but I'm going back to Burger time because he hits Montgomery very well. Your boy Burger, four for six with a homer off of Monty. He's had a huge month of August. It's time for our boy Burger to ring the bell again, Joe. 
Were you on him last night? Uh, I, I was were, not. Okay. A couple nights All ago. Right. A couple, couple nights of ago, nights ago. So you're back to J- big Jake Berger. Look at that. Look at those Jake. forearms. Uh, maybe he could come through. I think that game's got, got legs to potentially get over the eight and a half, nine. So uh, it looks pretty good to me. Uh, Next. Again, I think Arizona will, will score some runs too. So we'll see. Your game, Milwaukee uh-uh. and St. Louis. That's right. Milwaukee and St. Louis. We're going to go to that one as well. Lots of options here, honestly, because I don't think Tobias Myers or Kyle Gibson are any good. I will go with William Contreras. It was a price for me, plus 520. Probably should be a little bit lower than that tonight. So William Contreras at plus 520. You've got, I kind of like Burleson too, Joe, on the St. Louis side uh, going up against Myers. But we'll stick with Contreras here at plus 520 to get us going. Next, you talk about bell cows. Doesn't get more bell cow than your boy Otani, who actually hasn't hit one the last couple days. Two things for me, Joe. Hasn't hit one against Seattle the last two nights. And he's got a good price. Plus 240, he's homered off of Gilbert Grape in his career. So I'm going to go with Otani late night in Los Angeles. And are you ready, Joe, for the big bomb of the night? I can't believe that I'm actually putting this guy in Uh-oh. table time. This oh. is not uh, going with the bell cows, that's for sure, because this guy's had an <laughs> awful year, but he's gotten hot in the last three or four weeks. It, and you got a little sentimental value here tonight. Javi Baez in Chicago against the Cubs. He got the big round of applause last night, standing ovation, tip of the hat to the crowd. But tonight, Joe, he's facing Jamison Tyone. 12 for 21, two homers in his career off of Tyone. Plus 600 for Baez. Now, understand this. Baez is usually, Joe, like 9-1, to 10-1 to 1 to Homer. Down to 6 because of the great history against Tyone. Let's take advantage, Joe. 6-1 to one for Baez. Follow the money. The money's going on Baez tonight. They don't want the exposure. Ring that dinner bell. Can you ring the dinner bell tonight, Carver? Over Matias in- better get it ready for Carver and Lisi tonight. I want to hear that bell a lot. Ozuna, Seven and Trey a. Turner. Burger time, hope. William Contreras, Otani, Javi Baez, the six pack of taters for Wednesday night, Joe. Let's go. You're go- getting you a- don't I'm care if angry, the wind Joe. is blowing in, do you, in in Chicago, right? You don't, don't care. care. Don't care. Don't care. We're going to rip Javi. right through that bat door. Javi's got bat to door. Javi's gotta have a moment back at Wrigley. Got to have a moment. Uh, you got to have heard a moment it. against Jamison Tyone. Rumor yeah. on the street is he's swinging a hot bat, like you said, in the bat torque. That could be big tonight. He's swinging a hot bat. The bat. Joe's worried about the bat torque. He's always got to throw that in there when we talk about the home run. But what's his bat torque? What's the launch angle uh, that he's been going with recently? Uh, there you go, Joe. Tater time for this evening. Please, let's ring the bell a little bit uh, on Carver and Mason tonight. Oh, please. Very, very happy. Uh, all right, Joe. Football time for you. Uh, I have several things that I'm going to discuss. But actually, Joe, I'll keep this. Uh, I'll keep this stuff on the list until after the break because we're a little too close there. I did see this, though, just come across my desk uh, out of Cleveland. Uh, Deshaun Watson has arm soreness. He's held out of practice today. Unknown if he'll now play in the final preseason game, which Stefanski said he was going to do. Uh, Joe, it never ends uh, with this guy. Arm soreness. A couple weeks out from week one. Come on, Joe. Arm it's soreness. Like- Robert, this is a mess. I mean, what did he get paid? Two hundred eighty-one million guaranteed. Something around there. Yeah. His arm. His, his arm. And, and I, I was a huge backer of Deshaun back in Clemson, but he, his arm wasn't bothering him when he was showboating out in Italy, right? About uh, two or three months ago. You know, I'm just saying. Here's the thing about Cleveland: they're getting no respect in the AFC market. Twenty to one or twenty-three to one. Behind teams like the Jets and Chargers, you got to be kidding me! And do you think they're regretting Joe Flacco moving on to Indy? Now you got famous Jameis, famous Jameis, and DTR and Tyler Huntley. They're going to carry all four quarterbacks. Which one do they chop? General arm soreness for Deshaun Watson. I can't believe it, Joe. I can't believe it.
what a chance it is for Adam Paxton and Victor Tingstrom to pick up their first weekly titles. Adam Paxton, well, it's been the dream debut so far for him. For Victor Tingstrom, he'll feel like this is a moment, a little while coming, a place in the final up for grabs for one. Magic can do it. Make that double 18 away for a place in the final. Wesley Plazier was beaten, knocked out by Mike Warburton in a last leg decider. Play. That is what they are playing for. They are playing for the trophy. They are playing for the big prize pot and they are playing for a place in the £25,000 Champions Week. 97. There is a point you feel that reality will surely kick in for Adam Paxton. He's here on debut. Uh, he watches the Super Series almost every single week. What is it? He was happy just to be playing in a group. This could be the leg that we talk about at the end of the Why night as being the one that changed the final because Adam Paxton has just gone cold at the moment. Bang on He doesn't just get two, he gets the lot. Adam should take up the 16 out. If not, Mike's just behind him. He shot him a fifth leg. Can Paxton deliver one of the biggest moments of his career so far? He can. Double 12. What a moment that is from Adam Paxton. Mike Warburton was looking at 60 to win the match. Paxton, here's your moment. He approaches the hockey with confidence, with time, and delivers Adam Paxton on debut. The boy, the fanboy, comes to the Super Series and wins. And we are back for El Coast to Coast here on a Wednesday. Carver High and Joe Lisi in for Scotty on Sports Grid at Sports Grid Radio. Great to have everybody with us here today. All right, Joe, I have lots of football for you. 2-2 two -two as they go to the bottom of the sixth in San Francisco between the Giants and the White Sox. Uh, so you need uh, – it started out good, but you need a little bit more here uh, with just four runs on the board. You'd like to see that game get to like 4-4. You know, that would be more uh, kind of up your alley for that one. Uh, I, I'm still shaking my head, Joe. I, I know we're going to move on, but general arm soreness. I, I still, I'm still flabbergasted that. Well, what, this well guy are you going to sell them? Geez. Are you going to sell them? Sell them? I'm not. You're not selling them. What are, you, what are you talking about? You're not. You're backing them. You're backing well, them. Mark Carver, they haven't had. I, Deshaun Watson hasn't thrown for 300 yards in a Cleveland Brown uniform since he's been there. So why? The last two so why are you backing them? Because I think I th honestly think that with Chubb in the running game, Jameis could get in there, and their their defense could carry them. Why not? They're gonna run it. You're gonna do that act. They're gonna run it. That that's what you're saying. They're gonna run it. Carver, that's Carver. where you're going. Carver, oh, they'll be all right. They'll be okay. Joe, Don't worry. I can't believe you. He's got uh, the playmakers. Raiders. He's, He's got, got Judy. He's got yeah, Jerry you Judy. just told me he hasn't had a 300 yard passing game since he went to Cleveland. Who cares what Watson. kind of weapons he's got? Well, we know, yeah. Jay. Chuck it. Listen, you know this guy's going to play, and he's going to complain about things all year. I got this problem. I got that ailment. What a money burn that deal was. What an absolute money burn, Joe. That's like that, that gift where the guy's like shoveling the money into the furnace. You know, the cartoon. They're shoveling the money in there, and it's just all burning up on fire. That's the Deshaun Watson deal uh, in Cleveland. Uh, the Raiders made a decision yesterday about their quarterback competition, uh, if you want to call it that. We've played some clips of Antonio Pierce here where it seems like he, he really couldn't decide between either of them. They both look so awful uh, in the preseason games. But Gardner Minshew will be the guy for the Raiders in week one against the Chargers. Here he is, Joe, about winning the quarterback job. Yeah, man. Uh, super excited. He called me into his yeah, office. Man. Um, yeah. He gave me the news. Look, Couldn't be more grateful, gutty. excited. I'm so excited for this team. What we Never have in front of us, man. I think everybody in this locker yeah. room feels uh, how special we can be. 
think it's going to be a fun process of just getting better every day and uh, just couldn't be more grateful to be a part of it. I don't know, man. Right. I think anytime you step in there as a quarterback, you know, whatever the situation, you know, it's your team at that point, you know, and you have yeah, to treat man. like that. Um, yeah, man. You know, I, I like, you know, coming in right now, I think we have a lot of stuff that we can work on, really get dialed in now, uh, kind of getting the reps, getting some good yeah, conversations man. with these guys. Yeah. And just figuring out our, yeah, our identity and what we're going to look like. Yeah, <laughs> man. That's your guy, Joe. He does. That's your boy. I love him. Riverboat Gambler. I, I mean, Gordon Minshew. You know what he sounds like? You know, he sounds a little like Coffee Kofsky a little bit back there. <laughs> yeah, he man. does. Yeah, yeah, man. man. Yeah, yeah, man. Coffee Kofsky. Now, you're actually, you're actually backing these guys uh, this I year. Am. I have heard you yes. uh, around the network say things like yes. you're backing the Raiders to make the playoffs. Uh, that's year. right, I've heard man. That talk out of you. That's right, man. Yeah, I'm man. not afraid to say. I'm not afraid to say it, man. Plus three twenty to make the playoffs. Six and a half win total. Carver, uh, we know Kansas City hands down is the best team in the West. Who's the second best team? Gutless Jim Harbaugh and year number one and a even more gutless quarterback than Justin Herbert. Come on, Let, let's be real. Las Vegas smacked around Kansas City in Arrowhead as a twelve and a half point dog in December. And that was with Aiden O'Connell throwing for 34 yards in that game. They can run it with Zamir White. And as long as that defense steps up, led by Max Crosby, I think they'll be there. I think eight, nine, ten wins is right where they should be. And Gardner Minshew is the quarterback to get him there. And, and keep an eye out for Brock Bowers, too. Travis Kelsey type of player. Travis Kelsey mismatches a plenty inside the red zone. You say Eight, nine, ten wins? Is that what you said? Ladder it up. Eight, Ladder it up. Nine, ten? I know the oh, schedule Joe. is tough. Carver, Joe. here's what I see. All right, let me let me give you the breakdown quick. Joe. They're going they're going four and two at least in the division. They oh, lose two to Kansas least. City. Minimum, you're saying. Minimum. They're gonna go four Five and, and two. One best. Sweep Five Denver. And... So forget it. Denver. Uh, basically, Nassau Community College, and they're going to sweep the Chargers with Harbaugh. Sweep I said them. it. Finish. I said Done. it. Me. Delaware State is what they are. We're back, coast to coast, right off the road. Today, Conor McGregor, myself, and McGregor Sports and Entertainment is now an owner of Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. Welcome to the big leagues. David Feldman, baby, we did it. He's now an owner of BKFC with us, and we're going to take this motherfucking thing all the way to the top now. Yeah. 